Hi, this is Rebecca, and I'm going to talk you through some of the features of my Building Thinking Classrooms gradebook tracking sheet. So the first thing you're going to notice, there are lots and lots of tabs at the bottom, and I'll talk you through what they do. The first one is where you're going to input your student names and going to get sharing links. So you'll notice I just have some dummy names, but say first name, last name, say well honor Olympics and say here's Simone Biles. You're going to notice the name changes right here, and let's add let's add Michael Phelps. Okay. What's going what you're going to notice is this will automatically update this number name on the left-hand side. And also down here at the bottom there's these codes that say S1 S2. It's going to change the student name right here. So this is the math tracker for Simone Biles now. You can see we have Michael Phelps here. We've got LeBron. Now the rest are just in their default codes. Okay. This gradebook to point out is good for up to 32 students. If you have a class of bigger than 32, you're going to want to split it into using this gradebook for two, two parts in that one class. Okay, so the first thing you're going to input their names, and I'm going to encourage you to input their emails, their parent emails, and we'll do this, their, their link later. Okay, second tab is all unit details, and right now these are set to match my gradebook grading rubrics that I've created to go with illustrative mathematics, but you can change it to match whatever you have. So if we have unit one, say your unit one is rational numbers, you can change it there. And if you change it, say you're working on adding negatives, something like that. When you go into unit one, you're going to see it. now it says rational numbers adding negatives for that first one. The, set, the second one's still on my default at identifying scale factor, etc. So you can change that to adapt it to whatever is best for you. Okay. We'll look at this all grades later once we get a few grades in there. This navigation tool, this is just where you might want to track what you are going to count as evidence for what your students are getting correct. So now unit one, I gotta fix this. <laughs> so I'm gonna okay, so now if I go into unit one, right there, back back to what it was. Okay, in our navigation tool, you may want to say, here is what I was tracking. So on August 15th, I did the 1.4 cool cooldown. Okay, and that was mild. Cool down, maybe it was problem number one. And maybe also on 815, in the 1.4 cool down, problem two was a medium question. Okay, you, you don't have to use this page at all. This is just if you want to keep track of what you are actually counting as evidence. Okay, we're going to see a page, a tab for the marking codes. So this is similar to in Peter's book, the Building Thinking Classrooms book. What we're going to notice here is that I didn't separate all the different ways they're showing it correct individually. I didn't say like in a conversation, on paper, um, whatever. I just put it green. They have it correct. Absent and um, all the codes that are in yellow, which is silly mistake, the la wrong label. They got help. It was partially correct. They demonstrated it in their group. You can track them, but they're not going to count towards mastery. But they're also not going to break their streak. So m Peter in his book, he says mastery is demonstrated when you get two consecutive attempts um, individually at that level. I have done three consecutive attempts because I have found in the past a lot of times when kids do get two correct, a lot of times they will end up breaking their streak again. They may not have it totally consistent, but once they've gotten three in a row, I tend to see that they stay consistent and they really do have that skill mastered. So I've changed it to masters demonstrated when three are consecutive, three consecutive correct. And I do at that level or higher. So if they get um, two mediums and a spicy, that would also count for the medium streak. So I'll show you how this works as we break it down. So if we go into unit one and put in some sample grades, so here, say Simone, she gets this mild question right, we're going to go to the drop down menu, and we can say she has it right. 
Notice that I have these grades defaulted to two out of five, so they aren't on the rubric yet. And say she gets another one right and a third mild right. You're going to see this changes to a three out of five. Okay, she has three in a row at mild. Say I gave her um, one medium right, but then she got one wrong. Okay, um, if she got another right and another right, even though she has three medium right right now, it's still staying a three out of five because they aren't consecutive. But say she gets a spicy right over here. See how it moves to a four out of five? Because one, two, three, this is counting as consecutive. Now, one thing you're going to want to notice, if, um, if you have like a yellow here, like so, say she got it partially correct, that does not break the streak or even like an absent. So if I kept giving Simone grades right here, you can see that even though it's not three directly in a row, she's going to have that five out of five because none of these are breaking the streak. But if instead of an absent, this was wrong, it would only have the four out of five. Um, one thing I've noticed in a thinking classroom, I don't want to be so, so rigid for that because you're really trying to get a sense of their understanding. So if you need to put in your own manual grade, like you really think that this was like a particularly really rough question, almost nobody in the class got it right, you probably worded it poorly, you can have the ability to change that to a five out of five. And what's going to happen is on this all grade sheet, you're going to notice that in unit one, Simone now has four out of five. Okay, it's updated her grade, and the other ones are still all at two, so she only has a 48%. And I have this set to code with different colors for different grade levels once they have grades in them. So hopefully you can see that, how it's going to work for you, and get a good sense. And one other thing I want to mention is when you're in here, I really wanted to have this all, because a lot of my tracking is from tests and quizzes. So sometimes you're like, question one, basically everyone got that right. So you can mark it green and then go down and say, oh, okay, all those guys got it green, except for student 17 got it wrong and 13 was partially correct. And then you only have to change a little bit and it makes it very quick. So I love that feature. And when you get all your data populated, it will automatically go over. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's really helpful to you. And sorry, one last thing I wanted to say. If you find this like really over the top, um, you scroll down to get all the different units, 1B, 1C, 1D. If you don't have 32 students in your class and this is just seeming way too long for you, it's a great opportunity to just hide rows. Say you have a class that's only 20. So you wanted to um, not use students 21 to 32. You can go like 21 to 32 and you can um, right click on that and say hide rows 27 to 38. And then they're gone, and then it gets closer to the next level. So you may want to condense anything that you're missing. You can also do that here when it's the navigation tool. Say you're finished with Unit 1 and 2, and you want Unit 3 to be more obvious. You can just click here, here. Again, right-click, hide the columns. They're not gone. You can get them back. So they're not gone. If you want to um, see them again after you've hidden them, You can see right here, see the double arrow there, there. If you click that, you can get right there. It's kind of tricky to get to, but you can just get all your columns back that you hid or do the same thing with rows. So say if you got a new student and you needed to review one of those, you can just get it right back. Okay, enjoy.